Have you ever launched a Google ad campaign, spent a whole lot of money, got a whole lot of traffic to your website only to find it's generated zero leads and sales? Well, it's happened to me. With over 10 years of managing Google ad campaigns for myself and many, many other businesses, I've made every mistake that you can possibly make. And each mistake has been a fabulous learning opportunity. So in this video, I'm going to go through 10 hard earned and money wasting lessons that you can apply to your Google ads campaigns, saving you time, energy, and a whole lot of money. Make sure you stay through to the end of the video as well, because I also throw in a bonus one as well. If this is the first time watching one of my videos, hi there, I'm Alana, the founder of teachtraffic.com, and I've helped thousands of business owners just like yourself run profitable Google ad campaigns, even if you've had little to no experience in marketing. So without further ado, let's get stuck into these lessons. Oh, and don't forget, if you like this video, hit that thumbs icon and subscribe. Let's go do this. So the first lesson I want to talk about is setting up tracking, specifically conversion tracking. If you're unfamiliar with what conversion tracking is, essentially it's your way of telling Google, what is success for my business? So if you're an e-commerce store, it would be somebody who completes a purchase for a local business, let's say a dental practice. It might be somebody picking up the phone and calling you or submitting an online appointment request. Setting up conversion tracking is critical to you determining if your ads are profitable or not. Let me show you real quick in a live Google ad account. As you can see here, this particular Google ad account, we can see that they've spent just under $3,000, but our conversions say that we generated 141 leads at a cost per lead of just under $21. If I scroll up real quick, you can see here our chart, the clicks and the conversions coming through. So this gives us clarity to see are our ads generating leads and sales, and therefore can we justify to increase budget or do we need to really find where our campaigns are losing money and try and uh, stop that wasted ad spend. So you need to take this extra step of setting up your proper tracking. This is often a sticking point for some people. I have training courses on this inside teachtraffic.com you can check out, or if you want somebody to set this up for you, my son actually has a tracking set up business. Let me know in the comments if you want his details and I can get you in touch with him. Lesson number two is linking your Google ad account to your GA4 account, your YouTube channel, and also your Google business profile. So depending on what type of business you have, you may not want to connect to all those products, but at the very least, you want to connect your Google ad account to your GA4 account. I'll show you real quick in my live Google ad account. And as you can see here, you go to the tool section and data manager, and this is where you're going to connect your Google ad account to lots of different products. So you can see here, my connected products are my GA4, my merchant center, and also YouTube. And I have the opportunity to connect to other particular products here. So make sure you connect your Google ad account to all those so that they talk nicely to each other. By connecting your Google ad account to your GA4 account, you'll be able to get the traffic data from your Google ad account inside your analytics so you can see the behavior of that traffic. You also want to link to your YouTube channel so you can create uh, engagement audiences and possibly also run YouTube ads. And you also want to connect to your Google business profile so that you can have your ads show up in the Google Maps if you have a local type business and therefore want that online local presence. The third lesson I want to talk about is having a clear and defined strategy. Too many people do what I call the spray and pray approach and just throw a whole bunch of different campaigns and a bunch of keywords and all these different strategies at the wall without really stopping to think about who is their ideal client, what are they likely typing into Google and going after those particular people and only those people in a clear and defined manner. If I show you what I mean real quick in this live Google ad account. So this is actually for a dental practice and you'll see we have a bunch of different campaigns and each campaign has its own clear and defined strategy. So we have a dynamic search campaign, which I'll talk about in a different video. We have targeting certain regions, so certain uh, suburbs. We've got cosmetic, near me, brand and emergency. And they are all separated by different campaigns because they have different location targeting, different bid strategy 
and we also want different budgets for them. So it's all very, very strategic and very hyper targeted so that we're not wasting money on anyone that we don't want. So for many businesses, they might do a performance max campaign. And for you know most businesses, that's really, really unnecessary because you only want to do a handful of really targeted search campaigns. The fourth lesson I want to talk about is not to mix different campaign types together. That is, you want your search campaigns to be search campaigns only, your display campaigns to be display campaigns only. If I show you where to find this real quick in a live Google ad account, you can see it's in your campaign settings. You'll see my networks here. It says Google search network. So I do not have the search partners enabled nor the display network enabled. The problem occurs is when you are setting up a new campaign, these settings are automatically ticked. This is one of the sneaky default settings by Google. I really hate that they have that. So you're going to need to deselect this when you are setting up your campaign or if you've got an existing campaign, just go into those campaign settings. There's actually a whole bunch of different Google gotchas that we've actually compiled in a guide. If you visit this website URL down below, Download this guide for free and check out our other gotchas as well because they're all money-wasting mistakes that Google have embedded in their Google ad system. The fifth lesson I want to talk about is having good account structure. The classic mistake that people make is they have one campaign with one ad group and then about 300 keywords within that one ad group. That is just destined for failure. So please, please, please do not do this. You need good account structure. And that what I mean by that is very tightly themed ad groups. So within your ad groups, you have one theme of keywords. This is going to force really good ad relevance so that the right ad is going to show to the right person. The sixth lesson I want to talk about is to start with bottom of funnel keywords. Hopefully you're familiar with the concept of a sales funnel where people who are at the top of the funnel are just starting their uh, their buying journey. But by the time they get to the bottom of the funnel, they know exactly that they want what they want to buy. They're just trying to decide who to buy from. So Google ads is fantastic for bottom of funnel type inquiries. They know that they want a product or service. They're just trying to find somebody or someone to buy from. So my advice is to start advertising for only those bottom of funnel keywords, because odds are, if you can't convert those kinds of people, then going further up the funnel is just going to waste you more money. So I always say to people, start with the most high intent keywords and phrases and get those converting, get your ad campaigns profitable, and then you can consider to go further up the funnel for more browsing type keywords. The seventh lesson I want to talk about is to add negative keywords and all the available ad assets. Negative keywords will prevent your ads from showing up for things that you don't want. So for example, if you are a dental practice, you don't want to show up when somebody types in free dentist near me or bad dentist near me. So you would want to add free or bad or worst, etc., a whole bunch of different uh, phrases to your negative keyword list to prevent your ads for showing up for that. If I show you real quick in a live Google ad account, if we go to the keyword section and go to negative search keywords, you add your negative keywords here, or you can also use what's called a negative keyword list. And therefore that list can be applied to multiple campaigns. I actually have a video on this on my channel. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, negative keywords are really, really important. So you definitely want to add them to your ad account. And as mentioned, ad assets are additional real estate to your Google ads. They are free to set up and I highly, highly recommend you include them. If you go into your Google ad account under the assets section here, you'll see a whole bunch of different ad assets that you can add, image extensions, your business name, your logo. And if you are a local business, please, please set up the uh, location extension because this will uh, enable you to have your ads in the map stack. You'll find you get a better click through rate once you enable the possible ad assets that you want to your campaign. And therefore that should help your ad relevance and 
as a result, reduce your uh, cost per click because your quality score will be improved. The eighth lesson I have is to make sure that your money keywords are put into their own campaign with their own budget. This is because we never want our money keywords or the keywords that are generating us the most uh, amount of leads and sales to ever run out of budget. A classic mistake I see people make is they have their money keywords mixed in with their other keywords that they're possibly testing in the same campaign. And therefore that campaign budget is shared across all those keywords. So by stripping out your money keywords into their own campaign, you're ensuring that they never run out of budget. You're always generating your leads and sales from those keywords. And by having your test keywords in a separate campaign, with a separate budget, they aren't, they're not impacting your main money keywords. The ninth lesson I have is to exclude mobile apps from your retargeting campaigns. If you're unfamiliar with what retargeting is, no doubt you've experienced it before. You've gone to someone's website, left, and then you start seeing ads for that particular website follow you around the web. So I like to exclude mobile apps from my retargeting campaigns because I find they waste a lot of money due to inadvertent clicks. They often show up on people's mobile devices or iPads and people accidentally click on these ads when they really didn't intend to. So they get a lot of clicks and they don't get any leads and therefore waste uh, quite a lot of money. So make sure you exclude them from all your retargeting campaigns. And I actually even like to exclude them from my cold traffic display campaigns, but uh, at the very least exclude it for your retargeting campaign. If you want to check out, we've got a retargeting course for sales for about $10. I'll put a link in the description as well. You can definitely check out and we walk you through how to do that. The 10th lesson is to have a dynamic search campaign in your Google ad account. We've actually rolled this out for all the accounts that we manage. A dynamic search campaign will crawl the content of your website and decide what to bid on rather than you choosing keywords. I'm actually a big fan of dynamic search and I particularly like it because it's really good for keyword research. These are not competing with our main search campaigns. They're running conjunction with it. We bid differently so that we don't compete and we actually get really, really good results with our dynamic search campaign. So definitely check it out. I'll also put a link in the description to that a video walking you through how to do that too. And lastly, the bonus lesson I have is to implement the Google's automated bid strategies, but only if your account is generating more than 30 conversions in a 30 day period. We've got really good results with Google's automated bid strategies, be it maximize conversions or target CPA bidding, whereby sometimes we haven't even touched the traffic side. The only thing we've done is graduated to these auto bid strategies and the conversion rate has dramatically increased. You'll see here in this particular account, this is a dental account, we are running maximized conversions for all our campaigns. And if I scroll ac across real quick, you'll see how good our conversion rates are. It works incredibly well when Google has enough data in the ad account, which comes back to my first point of setting up conversion tracking because it uses that conversion data to bid appropriately and profitably for your particular campaign. So there you have it. Those are my 10 lessons in running Google ads for over 10 years. If you want to check out our website, check out teachtraffic.com and our training courses. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, hit that thumbs icon and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.